right, today's assignment is going to be to reflect on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's characterization and to pull that all together in a paragraph. So the slide says, explain what motivates your character's thoughts, speech, and actions. Use textual evidence and explain your thoughts. And of course, this is a sample. Um, I'm not going to have you do this for every single one of the characters. I'm going to ask you to pick two. Those two can be your favorite characters. They can be the characters you have the most information on. They can be the characters that you most identify with. You can, they could be the characters that you thought were the easiest. But I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to continue to use George. I'm going to go back to my previous slides that are already done. And I'm simply going to copy and paste all the work I've already done. And I'm going to put it right back on that slide. But I'm going to take out all the teacher stuff and build them together. Now, I know that when you actually build your evidence, you put the period after the parentheses. And just kind of backspacing, making sure I have space bars. I'm going to put my cursor right here, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go back. And I'm going to grab everything else that I did for George on Tuesday. And so Tuesday... This is what I did. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it back down. I'm going to paste it. I'm not making a separate paragraph because this is all going to be one. Okay, but I am going to have to go back and I'm going to go ahead and change the word key to George. Reformat. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to Wednesday's slide. I'm going to copy and paste. Get rid of all the teacher stuff. Now from here, I'm going to have to go back and probably add some things here and there. Um, so for example, I would never start off with just a quote. So this is all my information, but now I'm going to go back and really look at the question. So I have to explain what motivates George. Well, I'm going to look at these three things and I'm going to try to find something that they have in common. So George does not he does not care much about his African heritage here. He does not care about his African heritage here. He doesn't want to be late and he's kind of rude. So, um, I have to come up with something that motivates George. So George is motivated most by his love of American culture and not his African heritage. He tells Benita, let's face it, baby, your heritage, blah, blah, blah. He says this to Benita because Benita's attempting, wow, this is decent, okay? So this entire thing is actually now an M and an E and an L. It's a main idea and a piece of evidence and a link. So then my next one was here. George wants to make, okay, so I need to, I need to add a transition here. So um, I'm going to say, in addition, George wants a girl to make him look good. And he sees Benita. He says, ooh, and he sees Benita uh, all dressed up in her African robes, he says, look honey, we're going to, he comes from a culture, he wants this woman to show up, so 
make it stand out. So my link here, my explanation really only talks about how he's wealthy. Um, he wants his, a woman to show off and be by his side. Left in seven fifteen. Okay, yeah. Therefore, he'd rather beneath the look American. This next section is some scene direction, and it has to do with his watch. Do I use it? Do I include it? Do I really want you to have three pieces of evidence? Is it necessary? No, it's really not. I'm gonna require you to put all three of them here, but then what I want you to do is I want you to look for the two that have something in common. You want to have two that kind of share the same motivation. So this one really doesn't fit. So I'm going to get rid of it. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. It just doesn't necessarily fit in this paragraph. Um, so then the only thing I'm really missing in this paragraph is a concluding sentence, which should mimic this first sentence, right? I'm actually going to take it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. And I'm just going to reword it. As you can see, you say American culture is very important to George and George who would rather not identify himself as an African. Okay, so before I say I'm done with this, I'm gonna proofread it one time. I'm just gonna read it out loud and make sure it flows and sounds good. So George is motivated most by his love of American culture and not his African heritage. He tells Benita, let's face it, baby, your heritage is nothing but a bunch of raggedy ass spirituals and some grass huts. Oops, I'm missing my parenthetical. He says this to Benita because Benita is attempting to express her heritage after Asagai influences her to embrace where she comes from. George doesn't want to embrace his African heritage because he thinks it's an embarrassment. He's proud of his American culture. In addition, George wants a girl to make him look good. When he sees Benita all dressed up in her African robes, he says, Look, honey, we're going to the theater. We're not going to be in it. So go change, huh? He comes from an accomplished and rich black family. His family has chosen, excuse me, has risen in society. And I think he wants to break away. And I gotta get rid of this, I think. We don't use personal pronouns. And he wants to break away from his African heritage. So, I don't need a so there. Thus means the same thing. Thus, he wants a woman to show off and be by his side rather than someone who's unique or stands out. Therefore, he'd rather beneath a look American. I got one little parenthesis, one little apostrophe, and one quote. Let's do that. As you can see, American culture is very important to George. He would rather not identify himself as an African. So this is what I want you to do. Um, I want you to pick two characters. Doesn't matter which ones. And I want you to do what I did. Copy and paste, copy and paste, reformat, find a commonality, create a main idea, concluding sentence, string it all together. Let me know if you need help.